The brutality of Pablo Escobar and El Chapo's era have ended. But what if I told you there was someone far more deadly and violent than both of them combined? From a humble plantation worker to the leader of a cartel with the highest death count the world has ever seen. This is the story of the one, the only, El Mencho. Nemesio Aseguera Cervantes was born in July 1964 to a low-income family in the rural areas of Anguilla, Mexico. Nemesio grew up in poverty, spending most of his time cultivating avocados on a local plantation and playing with his five brothers. At 14, Nemesio was exposed to the world of drugs when he started working on marijuana plantations, guarding and protecting the crops. A few years later, when Nemesio was 18, he decided to flee to San Francisco, escaping Mexico in the pursuit of a better life. Nemesio's life would then follow a consistent trend of entering America illegally, getting arrested, and then being deported back to Mexico. It was during these formative years, the DEA believes Nemesio was exposed to the world of drugs and cartel life, specifically meth production and distribution, with his brother Abigail in the Redwood City of San Francisco. After being arrested and then deported back to Mexico at 30, Nemesio joined the police for a short time before entirely investing himself as a member of the Millennio Cartel. Joining Cartel Life Nemesio was noticed for his extreme prowess in criminal activity and business acumen, so much so that the Millennio Cartel accepted him into their community and began referring to him as his nickname El Mencho. Mencho began as a member of a hitman squad that was tasked with the protection of Armando Valencia Cornelio. Later, in 2003, Mencho faced unfortunate circumstances as his boss, Armando, was arrested. On top of this, a rival gang known as the Los Zetas began attacking the Millennial Cartel in Michoacan. In an attempt to recover, Mancho, with the help of his father-in-law, Jose Valencia, formed an alliance with the Sinalo Cartel in Guadalajara. Around this time, the tension between rival gangs and the authorities was high, so the Sinaloa Cartel's top leader and brother were arrested and subsequently killed during a bloody shootout. The Millennial Cartel began to collapse, and in an attempt to save it, Mencho pushed for the mantle of boss, paving the way for his bloody and merciless reign. Rise to Power Due to the civil unrest that followed from the Sinola Cartel collapsing, the sub-cartel, Milion, was divided into two factions. The first was La Resistencia, and the second was Los Torcidos. Led by Mencho, a turf war began for the regional trafficking control of Jalisco. The horrors that followed were unprecedented, even for the merciless life of the cartel. In the city of Jalisco during the year of 2002, the community faced an onslaught of vicious crimes related to the warring cartels. Horrific kidnappings, beheadings, and massacres became a constant threat for even average, law-abiding citizens. El Mencho and Los Torcidos eventually won the turf war through brutal, violent methods and propaganda campaigns. They cemented themselves as the primary cartel in western Mexico. Shortly after, El Mencho changed the name of his cartel to CJNG, Jalisco New Generation Cartel. It was here when Mencho truly became the most feared cartel leader in Mexico.